Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be doing the final detailing of a little black cap chickadee. So come on over to the workbench. Let's get started. First I'd like to share what I used for years and years and years is is just a paint stick with a little bit of sandpaper glued onto the tip of it to get into uh, delicate or detail sanding. Uh, fingernail files, I'll actually trim them to fit and I've recently discovered this tool. It is a sanding stick. It's on a strip and see you can just take your fingers and move that sanding strip as it wears as it uses. This whole set was $25, uh, but you can buy individual ones for six on Amazon and eBay. So I'll take the tool and, and go in and what I'm trying to do here is just remove the, the uh, charcoal. Uh, it will affect the paint. You'll be putting the paint on in such fine layers and if it gets all mucked up with the charcoal color, it darkens it. So go in, try to remove that, and of course I'm smoothing out any tool marks that are left behind, leaving these little step increments here nice and smooth, and now we're going to go in and burn. So um, I have a fairly light heat here, medium pressure, those two lines that I burned in there are the shaft of the feather and then we're coming in and and you definitely want a low heat to do this because you want these lines that are burning in right now as tight as close together as you can and you want to practice this it takes a little practice to, to get them really close together this is a very light touch and as the pen is pulling away from the quill you can see I'm, I'm moving quicker as I move away from it very light touch and I'm, and I'm curving the pen my fingers are twisting and I'm curving I love uh, burning in these type of feathers Here I'm going in on the these upper smaller feathers and just doing one line as the center of the feather and then coming down the other side and if you can imagine trying to undercut underneath the next group of feathers. Here I'm going in. Now I'm going along where I've already stoned, where I've textured with the stones. And you, you wanna, is, if you remember, I, with the stones I was putting in curved groups. If, if you go across those, it'll be like driving across a train track. You'll feel it, the, you'll feel those bumps. You wanna stay with the lines that you've already stoned in and you're just accenting here. You're, you're going in between with those stone marks, you're going into them, um, and you're giving it more detail, more texture. Once again, a single line here. And these, these feathers go really quick because you're just doing maybe a quarter of, of the feather, only what's visible. And these move along very quickly. Very light touch. Slightly angled back. Now I'll do one feather from each set of the group of feathers on this bird, just so you can get an idea. But 
it is very repetitious. Uh, so I don't want you to get bored with watching me do the same feathers over and over again. Uh, what it comes down to is you can practice even just on a, on a board. Practice burning. That's important. Okay, I just wanted to show you really quick. These are called study casts. This is a cast of an artist's carving that was a, a winning carving at the Ward World Championship. And you can, the reason why they do these, one, it's a, a way for them to make money. And it's like pecan shells and resin, and, and but it captures the detail really well. And you can see what this artist had to do to win. So you can, you don't want to copy verbatim, but you get an idea what it takes. You see the, the fine, fine detail in this. They're also what they call... Uh, these are like life cast of, this is a ruddy duck. So if you're carving a decoy and wanted to get, if you didn't have a, a ruddy duck in your backyard, uh, this is one way to get a likeness of it. This is an actual ruddy duck that's been cast in resin. This is a mallard. This one's the drake, I believe. And this is the hen. So these things are available through your carving supply, catalogs and warehouses. So here I'm using my dividers here, both on the uh, pattern and the study cast. And they're both exactly the same, so I'm able to get a pretty decent placement of the eye. And here I'm working on the beak. At first I was worried I didn't have enough wood around the beak to uh, make it look realistic or the proper size, but I see now it's, it's going to be fine. There's also tricks. If you cut too much wood off of an area or the beak or whatever, you can use a two-part epoxy putty or plastic wood, and I'll show that in when I start working on the eye in the next video, the placement of the eyes. I'm using the Dremel, sinking the round ruby bit right into the where the eye socket will be. And this channel is typical of most birds, like where their eye is, so there's a channel that runs through the head like that. And just rounding the sharp edges. Just smoothing out the channels there a little bit more. It's about a hundred or 120 grit sandpaper. That's usually what I use. It removes wood very quickly. Let's see. I'm using my finger as a as a as a tool there because I can feel you can feel the difference in transitions m much easier than you can see them. Fingers are very sensitive. So there's this transition here up to the cheeks, the, def the definition between the cheek and the chest 
that channel there, and you can see immediately uh, it, it makes a difference. So I'm trying to smooth out these lines. And that look is really starting to, to come along now. I'll go in with some sandpaper, try to remove some tool marks. And I actually shape the beak with sandpaper. A little afraid to go in with a knife on it. <clears throat> I didn't leave very much wood there, so very careful with sandpaper go in and now I'm tooling along the uh, stoning here, along the head, and we'll transition that right into the upper back area. Now I know some carvers will do that all along the, the belly of the bird as well. They'll just do these lines. It's a lot quicker, that's for sure. Um, but I prefer having that hint of being able to see the individual feathers. That's just me. So another resource that's available if, if you live by a science-based museum, they'll have what's called uh, study, study birds which are taxidermied birds, but not in a pose. They're, they're simply preserved birds. You would wear white gloves uh, to be able to handle them. Um, and you would set them on a, at a desk. You would like check them out like a book. They have these at the Smithsonian Institute, and I'm not that far from them that I can go to them and do drawings and study. There's also a little known place in Leesburg, Virginia, that is like a smaller version for, for kids and they can actually go there and touch things and feel things. And, and uh, I mean, there's people there doing college work uh, that are in the sciences, but that's where I go when I want to actually see the real bird um, and I can study it, take measurements. Um, interesting place. They have all kinds of stuff from rocks and gyms. Uh, they have uh, preserved sea creatures. Uh, it's the Smithsonian Institute, so you can imagine. So the bird is coming along. It looks very unified now. All these lines have uh, made it look like a, a bird rather than a, a piece of wood. Here I'm getting into the areas the stone could not reach. And into the areas where the stone was, where I did do some stoning, and once again following the lines of the stone, not cutting across any of those lines. Taking that heat up a little bit, and coming into the individual chest feathers that we tooled before. And these are just little lines. I'm, I'm coming up along the bottom of one feather. And that's going to be the deepest part of the burn. And moving fairly quickly, go in and fill in as many little lines as possible to give a that like fluffy look to it. So 
And like I said, this, this is repetitive. You would just keep doing that. Here I'm moving on to the head. And following the lines that were stoned in there before, you can see the sweeping motion of these feathers. You want this to look fluffy, kind of wispy. You want to avoid the temptation of just throwing in straight lines. Straight lines are easier and quicker, but uh, but don't let the temptation get you. Those little curvy lines, those sweeping lines really make a difference. Now up near the beak, they are little straight lines that shoot away from and out of, away from the beak, almost like a, a starburst or a, like a sunburst type of lines. <clears throat> but pretty quickly go into these sweeping curving lines. And just a word of safety here, the, uh, the pen, the burning pen is sharp and it is hot. Uh, you want to avoid cutting or burning yourself. Uh, and I've done both, cut and burn myself at the same time. And uh, the cut wasn't bad, but man, that burn hurts. So just more the same, keep burning in the tracks of the stone marks. And let's move ahead to the bird that's completely burned and detailed. And here we go. That's what it looks like when it's completely burned. Starting to look like a bird now. So our next step is to install the eyes. We'll be working on the eyes in the next video, so please share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.